Welcome to our electronic devotion focused on creation spirituality. Today we explore winter and especially the darkness of winter. Often darkness and winter are seen as something less desirable as for instance summer or light. This electronic devotion is based on the thought that light and darkness are two sides of the same coin. One is nothing without the other and both are good. Maybe that gives us a new perspective on the beauty of God's creation that might not always be obvious. These devotions come to you from Holy Trinity Lutheran Church. We are located in Port Angeles, Washington on the traditional territory of the Klalam people. Today we especially thank medieval mystic Meister Eckert for his insights into the beauty of darkness and our contemporary Leia, child of the universe, singer, songwriter, parent, teacher and perpetual student for her musical contribution. If you take just one thing from these creation spirituality devotions, let it be this. Open your heart to God's promise to love you no matter what. There is nothing you can do to earn God's love. God's grace is given as a free gift just because a fallen humanity needs grace. And now let us begin. English poet Christina Rossetti gave us this picture of winter in her 19th century hymn. In the bleak midwinter, softly wind made moan, earth stood hard as iron, water like a stone. Winter, cold, dark, times of hunger, for some times of forced inactivity, for others times of almost ceaseless searching. At the winter solstice, we marked the turning of the year. This was weeks ago, yet the nights are still long. The days are cold. Then how shall we live? At last month's electronic service, we sang of Earth's wit and wisdom. 
easy to see in spring wildflowers, budding leaves, the return of songbirds. But what of this time, this time of dark and cold? Let's explore some of the wonder and mystery and even wit of winter. The stars are brighter. Due to our trip around the sun, we actually see a different part of the Milky Way in the winter than in the summer months. The far-flung stars of the Perseus arm appear brighter in the winter sky. The moon is higher in the sky. During the winter, the moon travels in a higher arc than in the summer. Since time immemorial, winter moons have provided light for hunting and traveling. In the high Arctic, when the sun is below the horizon for months at a time, Moonlight is actually used by some phytoplankton to make their food, and they in turn are food for other creatures. How wonderful to have the moon high in the sky when the sun is such a fleeting presence. From Ojibwe tradition, the first moon of creation and the new year is the spirit moon. It is a time to honor the silence of winter and to realize our place within all of creation. Another wonder of winter is ice. Water freezes. Of course it does. As water cools, it becomes heavier, more dense. But the really strange and miraculous thing about water is that just as it's about to freeze, its molecules stretch out to form a crystal lattice that takes up more space than its liquid version. It becomes less dense, and ice floats. Lakes freeze at the surface, not from the bottom up. The bottom dwellers and the swimmers are protected, and life continues. Snow. Water freezes in the air, too. A small granule of dust is needed for crystallization to begin. For snowflakes to form, each in their own beautiful six-armed pattern. Snow, especially the dry, fluffy stuff, is a great insulator. All those air spaces between the snowflakes create a barrier to movement of air and cold. Many animals make use of that property and live under the snow. Biologists have a fun term for this, the subnivian microclimate. Voles and other animals inhabit these under-the-snow areas and create extensive tunnels to reach food and stay warm. The temperature is almost constant. Nests are built, seeds and grasses are consumed. Life goes on in the quiet darkness. The wonders and ways of winter continue to amaze us. Many animals survive the winter by hibernating. What are the triggers that prompt cooling and warming? How is blood flow restored without damage to delicate tissues? Some animals cache food before hibernation. In the Olympic lowlands, mountain beavers stash lots of plants for winter meals. Marmots, on the other hand, eat like crazy in the late summer, packing on extra weight that will get them through the long months of hibernation. In ponds and rivers, beaver create stashes of food near their lodges, which they reach by underwater entry points. Such amazing work. And we haven't even talked about birds. Chickadees, in addition to almost constant daily snacking, stash seeds in clefts of bark. Woodpeckers, too, have developed extraordinary spatial memory to assist in finding those hidden meals. Some can fluff out their feathers to improve insulation against the cold. Hummingbirds, on the other hand, can't fluff out and don't stash food. They have to eat two to three times their body weight each day to keep going. Then they stop and dip into torpor. Torpor is like hibernation. They drop their core temperature and their heart rate and breathing are almost undetectable. But... Rather than staying in this depressed state for weeks, like bears, they go in and out of torpor daily, sometimes several times each day. 
The strategies and methods of plants and animals for living in the cold and dark are almost boundless. And biologists are continually learning more about various ways that animals successfully navigate the winter months. What have you observed? What might be our strategies, not just to survive, but to thrive together in the turning of the seasons? Meister Eckhard, Eckhard von Hochheim, was born between 1250 and 1260 in the village Tambach near Gotha in the land graviate of Thuringia. He joined the Dominican order at Erfurt probably when he was around 18 years old. He worked as a professor and also in high administrative office within the Dominican order in France and Germany. Eckhart wrote many sermons and instructions and theological and mystic texts and groups formed around his teaching. However, he lived in times of disarray and conflict within the church and monastic orders, and he was accused of heresy in 1325. The process was ongoing when Eckhart died around 1328. Today, we can learn from Eckhart's creation spirituality. When God created all things that carried within itself the images of all created things, that is the spark. In the beginning, God has eternally borne us, all of us, all of creation, of the concealed darkness, the first purity. The darkness at the beginning is everlasting, pure and full of unspoken knowledge. The earth and all that is on it was not created against the darkness, but out of the darkness. The darkness already contained all wisdom, all beauty, all joy, just unspoken, not yet formed, not yet formed into words, and not yet visible. The darkness is nothing to be afraid of. We shall honor it the same as the light. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was with God in the beginning. Everything came into being through the Word, and without the Word nothing came into being. What came into being through the Word was life, and the life was the light for all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness doesn't extinguish the light and the darkness doesn't extinguish the light. Many of us will have other translations in our head for this verse. The New Revised Standard Version, for example, and the darkness did not overcome it. Overcome sounds like darkness and light are enemies engaged in a fight, don't you think? It can and oftentimes has been seen that way. The word used in Greek is Cataliban from Catalabano. It can be translated as grasp, in the sense of take hold of, but also comprehend. In the King James Bible, the word comprehend is chosen. I like the common English Bible version, did not extinguish. The darkness chooses to let the light stand. The darkness agrees to be illuminated by the light, to have some of its hidden knowledge discovered and revealed. When St. John refers to in the beginning, he is talking about the very beginning of the created world, the moment described in Genesis 1, 1 to 4, when God separates light and darkness, creates day and night and time. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. Light and darkness, day and night, both have their purpose. Both are necessary for created beings. 
They provide a rhythm between times of activity and times of rest, times of daring and times of protection, times of work and times of regeneration. How can darkness and light be enemies when both are needed as parts of God's good creation, just as summer and winter are needed, dry season and rain season, sun and moon? I wondered, this is many years ago, whether I would be asked how it is that each blade of grass can be so different from the others, and it did happen that I was asked how they could be so different. I said, what is more surprising is how they are all so alike. Uniqueness and likeness are what makes the fullness of creation. These are the pillars of God's work. It is this paradox, uniqueness and likeness, diversity and unity, multitude and oneness, in which God makes visible the beauty and wisdom and joy which the darkness already contained and which now is part of the light as well as the darkness. Meister Eckert says that it is indifference that God's goodness is revealed. And so all human beings in their diversity are an expression of God's overflowing creative abundance, and all are made one in God's image. What God gives is his being, and his being is his goodness and his goodness is his love. Honor the dark as you do the light. Receive the gifts that come to us by day and by night. I choose to honor the dark, uncertainty and change. Deliver us from fear until only love remains. Honor the dark Honor the as dark. you do the light. Receive Honor the gifts that come to us by day dark. and by night. I choose to Honor the dark, Honor the uncertainty dark. and change. Deliver Honor us from fear until only love remains. As the light of the dark slips me from the as you do the light, receive as the gifts that come to us by day and by night. I choose to sometimes feel the dark, uncertainty and change. To let the dust from fear until only love remains. As the light of the dark slips me from the dark of the dark. I know a guy who grew up in one of the largest cities on the planet. He was a child of the metropolis. He could tell from the color of the asphalt or the crack patterns in which borough he was. Blindfold him and dump him somewhere and he would find home without asking someone or consulting a navigation app. He loved how the city smelled, that urban mixture of car exhaust, ripe trash, fragrant park and alley trees that mixed and mingled with the pleasant smells from restaurant kitchens and food vendors that sold food from all over the world. From grandma's cooking to the most exotic dishes, the city had something to tickle every palate. Skyscrapers were his cathedral. And he knew how to make life in a mega city work. He knew how to evade traffic and to get where he wanted to go. The subway system was a constant well of enjoyment for him. As a hobby, he developed new subway lines that connected the centers of his life in the most efficient way. And he knew how to avoid the queues of tourists when he wanted to go into a museum or an exhibition. He never felt the urge to live somewhere else. He was a creature who was evolved to thrive in the concrete jungle. And then 
came the day that he booked a seminar that promised that it would give you a new perspective on life. That was the first time that he left the city. A day in the country was strange enough, but the real surprise came at night. The seminar was held in a place that was so remote that it was truly dark. He had never experienced darkness like that. There were none of the things that illuminate the city every second of every night. No street lights, no neon signs, no high-powered floodlights that project the, all the colors of the rainbow on the skyscrapers. It was simply dark. And because it was so dark, the tiniest light became a festival for his senses. The candle in his neighbor's room was a revelation. The darkness did not overwhelm the tiny light. On the contrary, the darkness focused the light. It made the tiny flame bright and visible. While the city lights would have drowned it, the darkness made the candle shine for miles. The guy had always thought that darkness had the quality of nothingness. It was the absence of light and life. In the city, darkness meant danger. It was where creatures lingered that who wanted your wallet. Darkness was like a hole in the universe that threatened to swallow you. Now he saw that darkness and light are companions. Darkness provides a canvas for the light. It is a basis on which light and life grow and become meaningful. After a few years, he couldn't remember if the seminar changed anything in his life. But the darkness he experienced there for the first time, that surely did. Hi, this is Bob Larson, and this is the recent climate news, a summary of the most important developments for January 2020. 22. Ocean temperatures set another record in 2021. The, the five hottest temperatures ever set have occurred in the last five years. The energy required to raise the temperature in the ocean last year is equal to 20 times the entire energy consumption of the world. Or another way to think about it, it's the heat released by 175 million Hiroshima-sized atomic bombs. Where did the heat come from? Well, it, it came from the atmosphere that's been heating up from uh, human-caused climate warming, and it was absorbed by the ocean. We all know warmer oceans have disastrous consequences. Not only does it lead to more melted ice and higher ocean levels, but there's more moisture to, available to power large storms, and it, it has severe damage to marine life. This illustrates really the serious climate and balance we have. So as a result of warming water uh, and air, the Arctic is warming three times faster than the rest of the planet. They are already uh, more than three degrees Celsius warmer than uh, historical levels. And warm, the warming Arctic means warming air, and that is influencing the wind patterns at the North Pole. So that has caused a major disruption in the polar vor vortex which uh, is sinking lower into the North American continent and uh, allowing colder air to influence our winters. The same phenomenon also allows record-breaking heat to reach Siberia. You might have seen last year that temperatures in Siberia exceeded 100 degrees Fahrenheit for the first time. So ironically, uh, warmer Arctic leads to colder winter, winters for us, and this counterintuitive effect shows the complex um, range of climate impacts. Also last year, carbon emissions in the U.S. rose to almost equal uh, pre-pandemic level. CO2 emissions rose between 6 and 7% last year. And although that's still 5% lower than they were in 2019, it's a larger uh, increase than was expected. The reason for this is primarily the increased use of coal to generate electricity and also increased freight on our roads. So overall, the Energy Information Agency predicts a 7% rise in U.S. CO2 emissions, and the International Energy Agency also projects a 7% rise in global CO2 emissions from last year. This all illustrates the limited number of options for reducing CO2 emissions uh, in the short term. On a positive note, sales of electric vehicles shattered records worldwide last year, and they were up an amazing 90% over uh, 2020. 
So that's more than 4 million electric and around 2.5 million uh, plug-in hybrids sold. That represents over 7% of global car sales, up from 2.6% in 2019. That's pretty amazing. Tesla sold record number of cars. And VW, in its first year of production, sold more than 5% of its uh, production as electrics, and that is going to grow. Electric pickup trucks are poised to take off this year. This is at the heart of the vehicle market. Ford has got 200,000 reservations for their F-150 Lightning and GM is starting to produce electric uh, pickups this year, and all, they're all sold out. Uh, the pipeline is full of these new vehicles, and I want to emphasize the commercial delivery vehicles, electric vehicles, are really in uh, high demand. So stay tuned for the large volume of new uh, vehicles hitting the roads between now and 2030. That ends the presentation for this month. This is Eddie the Eagle. He was a British ski jumper and he represented Great Britain in the 1988 Olympics, the first Olympian since 1928. Britain is not really a ski jumping nation and so Eddie didn't jump as far as his competitors, but he did jump. Dear God, we give thanks for the seasons, the cycle of life and today especially for the season of winter, which contains the seed of new life. We give thanks for the snow and ice that brings forth winter sports and sources of inspiration like Eddie the Eagle. I remember the stir he caused in the media. And 30 years later, I can still remember him, the one who didn't win. Those who won the events I have forgotten. Everyone is known to you, dear God. Open our hearts and minds to remember those who are usually forgotten. Eddie competed, but he didn't win any ski jumping contests. Everyone is precious in God's sight. We pray for those who don't win, and we ask you to open our hearts and minds and save us from our obsession with winning and defeating others. Even if you are not a very good ski jumper, it takes enormous courage to race down the hill and launch yourself into the air as Eddie did. God loves the bold and the meek. We pray for those who have courage and we ask God to give us the wisdom to guide our courage. Many said that Eddie should not jump because he couldn't jump very far. God encourages all to live life to the fullest. We pray for those who try to fly. May they always have the encouragement they need. Eddie the Eagle inspired the Olympic Committee to institute the Eddie the Eagle rule the rule is especially designed to get rid of people like Eddie and focus only on serious contenders. God wants all to have a seat at the table. We pray for all who are excluded in any way. May they find comfort in God's unconditional love for them. We pray for mercy for those who exclude others. May God open their hearts and minds to the suffering they cause. Amen.
joy transforms our hands to The darkness of winter carries within itself the seed of new life. We hope that this electronic devotion was able to inspire you to think about the union of light and darkness in a new and unexpected way. God calls us to be good stewards and to take care of God's creation. This planet that God has given us is the basis of all that we are. Our planet needs our care and our love. We are connected to all living things and we are incomplete without the diversity of life that makes this world so wonderful. Please like the video and subscribe to our channel. Please share this electronic devotion with all your friends. God bless you and keep you. Until we meet again, goodbye.